Thanks for clicking on Wayne.com for another edition of Inside the Zone. Blake Sebring joining us as always. And Blake, only six games remaining. Yes. In the regular season, the countdown is on. Playoffs, baby. Yeah. Heading forward for these next two weeks, what are the Comets trying to do? Because we've seen them sign a few guys. We've seen guys move up and down. We've seen different lines. I mean, what are we going to be seeing over the next two weeks? They're trying to survive until they can get to the playoffs. I mean, that really is. I mean, you're playing with half your lineup. There's 11 guys right now who are out on call-ups or uh, injuries. That's, that's more than half your lineup. So basically, you're trying to survive. Maybe keep winning if you can, and they're doing okay at that. Um, but really, I looked across the league. Nobody's got a winning streak going that's any, of any significance because they're all going through the same thing. I mean, Cincinnati, they play uh, tomorrow night. Cincinnati's 5-3-3. Uh, three, and three. You know, so they're doing okay. That's like one of the better le- records the last 10, 11 games. Nobody's doing anything because they got so many call-ups and injuries. Well, taking a look at last week, what did you see from the comments? Because Wednesday night, obviously defensively they played well. They get the overtime win thanks to Sid. Nagel played very well in that game. What do you take away from Wednesday's win? I, I think the comments are still tired. I really do. And I think it's, it's a combination of things. It's the schedule. It's that long road trip. It's the fact that they do have so many guys out. And you never know who's going up or out next, and they're just constantly adjusting. I think they're tired. I really do. And I don't know what you do about it because the schedule's not allowing them to do anything about it. How concerned then are you when you take a look at Friday's game against Toledo and what happened there? I, I think you should be a big concern. Yeah, I really do. Um, there's a bunch of guys playing who early in the year wouldn't be playing right now because of injuries. Um, and, and I think you, you want to be at your freshest. Your strongest going into the playoffs, and I'm not sure how they get there because they don't have the roster to be able to sit guys and do it. Like uh, tomorrow, I mean, Jordan Southorn's a toss-up if he's going to be able to play or not, and they've got six defensemen they need him to play. Knowing Jordan, he'll play. Yeah, who are some of the injuries? What are some of the injuries, I guess I should say, uh, that the Comets need to be healthier two weeks from now? Well, I think I think most of the defensemen are pretty beat up. Um, I think... I think everybody's got, everybody's got something. There's a difference between being injured and being hurt. Every one of them is hurting. Not all of them are injured. So everybody is dealing with something. Um, but they don't have anybody to fill in. There's nobody left. Everybody that's, that can skate is playing. So you can't sit somebody down and say, hey, take a night off, you know, just relax. That's not going to happen. Saturday, a lot of names that are new to Comets fans who saw them out there on the ice what did you see from some of these new guys? Because you had, you had Friedman get a goal in there as first as a pro. You had Alex Vizzano in there at goal. You know, he only had 13 shots to face. Yeah. Uh, Stop 12 of them. So what did you see from some of those guys that we hadn't seen so far before? I, I, I saw, you could see the energy level in those guys, okay? You could see they were fired up. This was their shot, and they were going to make the most of it. I thought Krunk did a really nice job. He's showing me more and more every game what he can do. He's not just a fighter, thank God. He's actually a player, you know, and I like that. It's, it's really fun to watch him show something different every game. Um, and, and David Friedman, I think he's starting to get more comfortable each game. You know, it's got to be hard. You come in here, you're playing a new system. You're playing with guys you, you barely practice with, and yet you're supposed to go out there and perform your best, you know. I mean, it's got to be really, really hard, and, and maybe you haven't skated for two weeks, too. You know, so you're throwing all that in, so the longer they play, the better they're going to get. The D-men are, I would think, one of your biggest concerns in terms of depth, and you mentioned health at this point. Yeah. You know, Cody Corbett, uh, Mason Gertzen, they're up now in the age. I mean, that can change. Um, so you know, is Will Weber. You know, Will, Will Weber, Weber's right, still up. Chicago, I mean, right? No, he's with, he's with San Antonio. San Antonio, okay. I, I mean, but he's probably been, he's been one of your most, reliable defenseman all year. I mean, he's just been a rock back there, and now he's up, and deservedly so. So you got, you got four guys right now that are up, or you could, if you count Southorn, who's out right now. Just to, I mean, he, he'll probably play tomorrow. We'll see. But that's four guys who would be in the lineup. You know, I mean, so you're kind of patching your, your defense together. You're moving guys around. You're playing with him tonight instead of him, that type of thing. Oh, yeah, you're on the power play tonight. You know, it's just kind of – Everybody's a little bit off their rhythm a little bit, is that, if that makes sense. Um, you don't necessarily know the new guys you're playing with either. 
So you've really got to rely on the system and, and don't overthink it. Just play the system, which is what they got caught doing against Toledo. They got caught overthinking big time, and that's what hurt them. I have yet to see a game in the last two, three years where they've been able to skate with Toledo, and every game they go out there, we're going to outskate them. No, you're not. It's just not going to work. You've got to find something different. And the game plan is always different than that, but they don't follow it. You know? When you take a look at Spencer Martin, up in the AHL. It's baffling, isn't it? I, was just, I wasn't going to say it in those terms, but he wasn't no, uber he, successful here. Right. He's been uh, inconsistent here. He's Pat, had some good games. Right. Pat Nagel, you would say, has outplayed him here. Oh, yes. Um, but he goes up in the AHL. He's and, got two shutouts in yeah. his last four games. He's the AHL, not goaltender of the week, player of the week. I know. It's and amazing. And he was fantastic if you look at the and numbers. And he's, he's been pretty good up there all year, too. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense. There's got to be a comfort level thing. Because, and look at it this way, too. It's pretty much the same defense. You know, I mean, it's not like uh, the Rampage defense is that much better than the Comets because it's constantly shifting back and forth. When you take a look at the importance of the next couple of weeks in terms of the seeding for the Western Conference, I think there, there's where the importance lies, yeah. aside from getting healthy for the playoffs, don't you? Because really, like, two through six, you could land anywhere if you're the Comets. Yeah, but... I think if you win tomorrow night, tomorrow night's game is huge. I mean, it's the biggest game of the year. The guys know it. They're not ducking it. They're saying it. Um, like Gary said, it's been circled on the calendar for quite a while. Uh, they may not talk about it openly, but they all know it's there. They know what it means. Tomorrow, if you win tomorrow night, the rest takes care of itself. It really does. Um, because the lowest you can go is third then, because you would, be a, you would be a division champion, okay? So you can't go any lower than third. Like, Allen might end up with more points, but they're not going to be a division champion, so they can't really go any further than, right, than fourth. fourth. So it's okay. Now, the problem is going to be, do you want home ice in the second round when you might end up having to play Idaho? Never been to Idaho, never played Idaho. Lovely potatoes. Well, I'm supposing. You know, <laughs> and they got that blue field, too, you know. Yeah, that's Where right. all those ducks crash land, you know. Yeah, I think it's a lake. All that, yeah. all that urban legends, yeah. I mean, there's all kinds of things... You know, so you want to play them at home as much as possible. And the Comets have been pretty good at home this year, too. So, you know, that's, it's just, I don't know. This just means nothing. I'm sorry, folks. It just really doesn't. <laughs> See, this is why we bring them in for this kind of analysis. But to when you, get, you, that it when you mean have anything. 11 out of your 16 skaters aren't going to be there for the playoffs, more or less, you're putting lipstick on it, you know, and they're playing their butts off. They really are. They, Mason Batit is, is really playing well, and Krunk and Friedman and Vazano and, and Randy Cure has really been, what a rock that guy uh -huh. has been, you know. And it's just like these guys are all fighting for, like, one spot. Leo Thomas, again, um, he's a veteran, and, you know, he's got to know. You know, they all know. They're just playing so hard. But it's just, it really, in the big picture, it doesn't compute. It, I want to go back to Saturday's game because... Giving up only 13 shots. I know Evansville is not really good. Oh, they have five guys from the Federal League on that roster. But the fact that you only give up 13 shots, I mean, that has to be yeah, something you're, to hang your but head it's, on. But it's 1-1, one, one, you know, and it's one to nothing if that goal doesn't count, which it shouldn't have, I didn't think. You know, if the goal at the end of the second period that went on, that went in right the very last split second, which I thought it was outside the goal when the horn went. But, I mean, so you're, eh, Yeah. Hey, I'm trying. I'm trying know, to bring I'm up trying topics. To. I'm trying I'm to. Digging, it's just, it's I'm digging, man. I'm digging. Not there right now, and and I'm not going to lie to people about it. Okay. You know, I mean, I'm trying to be honest about it. We're in the political season. One is honesty. Why do you think I wrote? Of, why do you think I wrote about the Cincinnati game today instead of looking back at the Evansville game? Oh, right. yes. Yeah, I mean, ugh, you know. Um, what would a Midwest championship mean? What would the division championship mean to this? I team? think it's amazing. I mean, you think about it. Two years. Two totally different rosters, mm -hmm. two totally different situations, and they're still there. That's pretty cool. That's a real nest. That's a real feather in, in Gary uh, Graham's nest or egg or hat or whatever you want to use the cliche, okay? Uh -huh. That's pretty amazing considering your dues and 11 guys that are filled in and stuff and um, all the crap that they went through with the injuries and stuff. You know, you could say, okay, they're 500 the last 20 games. Yeah, that's without Embach. That's without at least just a minimum, bare minimum, four guys in San Antonio. That's with all the injuries they've had. There's six guys right now, at the very least, who would be regulars for you. That's two lines, mm -hmm. and you're still getting it done somehow. You're still hanging in, you know. 
That's pretty impressive. Saturday, Sunday of this week, you got home games. You have a big break in the middle of the week because you have the Tuesday night game at Cincinnati, so you have some time to get healthy, get some rest, and then you're going to be playing back-to-backs at home. I mean, it's not going to get a lot easier right. or, or set up better. Right, at this and your last, your last road game is in Indy. So basically, you only have to travel two hours the rest of the season after tomorrow night. Yeah. So how important are those weekend games? Are they just tune-ups? I mean, are we even going to see anything that we might see in the postseason? I think they're every bit as important as the last two weeks have been. How's that? That's fantastic. That's a, I could run for office, couldn't but I? But you just said the Tuesday night game is the most important game of the season. Yes, but after that, the rest of them are not that important. Okay. You know, I could run for political office here real quick. Yeah. I mean, because they really guards with Blake. They really don't. I mean, other than if you, you know, if you get a point or two out of, yeah, even if it's overtime or shootout losses, that's good. You know, yeah. I mean, because you still have the game in hand on Idaho and, and you just, yeah. And you win the tiebreaker with Idaho. So that's huge. I mean, you own the tiebreaker with Idaho and with Cincinnati because you've only won one shootout all year. You've only been in two or three, you know, but that's big. That's really big. So basically, you have an extra point up on all of them. All right. So everything we said means nothing going forward. This week means nothing except for Tuesday night. I get accused of that a lot. I know. know. Well, usually by women, but you know. There you go. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> well, heck, it might even do better on the ratings. Who knows? We'll have a dating game. Um, oh, God, no. Uh, that's, that'll do it this week for Inside the Zone, though. We'll be talking about the final week of the season next Monday right here on Wayne.com. For Blake, I'm Glenn. You'll definitely want to tune in. It might mean something One of us will be back next week. It won't be me, probably, but okay. We both know. get paid the same, I think. <laughs> yeah, we do. Exactly. See you next week. <laughs>